Hello everyone and, and Katribu. Katribu. I am Dina Ventura. I'm Jojo Silvestre. <laughs> and welcome to Perfect. Perfect. So Jojo, how yeah. are you? Welcome to the yeah, show. It's nice to be here today. Yes, Jojo hi, is... Yes, hi Francine. Uh, this afternoon we are joined, Jojo, by three very beautiful yes, ladies. Yes, I can see that. I've known um, two of them for quite mm. some time, yes, but... We hardly ever saw each other after oh, all these years. <laughs> Some I, I forget now. Okay, so anyway, okay. let me introduce to everyone. Um, our first guest is uh, Celine Lim. She's the ma managing director of Mullen Low Mark. Okay. Okay, that's a PR yeah. company, and she works there together with Jenny Iraswegi. Oh, okay. Okay, and our third guest is M Sulit. She's a mompreneur. Oh, yes, oh, so yeah. we'll let okay. them talk about themselves yeah. after we welcome them to the show. Welcome, ladies. Hi. Welcome Hi. Hi. Thanks for having <laughs> us. Hi, Dina. Hi, Jojo. Thank you Hello. for having us. Yeah. And so, hi, Em. Hi, Jenny. Hi, hi guys. <laughs> Hello. So how <laughs> nice to see you guys well, again virtually. Oh, oh, it's, it's been a long time, no? When was the last time we saw each other, Celine? Uh, you know, Dina, I can't even remember. I think definitely, well, obviously it's been more than a year. That's all I know for <laughs> sure. Um, sure. Because I arrived here in Canada in March. Yet, so, oh. um, and I'm I'm not really sure what, what event of ours said that you attended last. But I don't know, Jenny. Jenny, when did you see Dina? Because, you know, since we worked together... For sure, you were also there at the yeah, event. <laughs> oh, oh. That was I, I can event. recall like the fashion event. Oh, fashion. Fashion, yes. So that, those fashion events years ago. <laughs> I know. Other, uh, yeah. Anyway. A lot of fashion events right. in the past. It's been such a <laughs> strange year for all of us. So um, maybe you can tell us how you've been this past year since yeah. the pandemic started. Yeah. Maybe you can start with Celine. So Celine, you got stuck in Canada. Oh, for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, um, I was actually just supposed to be in Canada for two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, then I was gonna go to um, go on a trip to San Francisco. But anyway, the bottom line is I was supposed to be back in Manila by May, and obviously that didn't happen because I ended up getting stuck here in Canada. Um, because of the pandemic. I mean, it's okay because I'm Canadian, so this also feels like home for me. Um, but it definitely feels strange to be here, you know, for this length of time. It's just a little things like, um, for example, it's winter now. I wasn't really prepared for winter. Um, I didn't even bring any single winter coat. But, you know, those are all just little inconveniences. It's, it's, it's okay. Well, you look very <laughs> we're we're safe, we're well, we're healthy, it's fine. Oh, you look so happy na Manenda, no? Well adjusted <laughs> <laughs> to the winter Thank season. you, thank you. <laughs> Blooming ba? Like oh, my yeah. background. <laughs> Your flowers. <laughs> How about you, Jenny? <laughs> Jenny, so you're into scuba diving, right? So no more scuba diving for you or any kind of traveling? For me, yeah. well, definitely no traveling, no scuba diving. But mm -hmm. one thing good was that I discovered something new in terms of fitness. So, like, oh. there are all these apps. Mm. And I started, like, when, when the pandemic uh, forced us to be in house arrest, I basically discovered this site called Allo Moves, and that's where I get my fitness now. And that's kind of just how I see life right now it's really more making the most out of the situation and trying to push forward no matter what yeah. so yeah no diving no traveling but there are other ways to enjoy myself i suppose yeah good attitude i think that's why they're successful women Jojo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and miss m and i i don't think we've had the pleasure of uh, being introduced in the past but yeah uh, nice to meet nice you guys you. if it's on zoom <laughs> Oh, nga. So tell us about Game Changer naman muna and then um, how, what what kept you busy this past few months? Okay, um, Game Changer has been existing since 2012. Um, but luckily, during this pandemic, the whole business wasn't affected, affected very much except for the events part. Um, a lot of our clients have been with us since as early as we... 
um, put up the business. So we have clients like since 2012 until now, <laughs> they're still with us. Wow. Um, and a lot of them are international clients. So, so in terms of workload, our workload still remains except that the online or the, the off-ground or the on-ground activations um, were all canceled. So it's just the events part of the business that, that was heavily affected. But everything else, like um, the business consultancy, uh, sales and marketing, um, the full creative suite, and everything that we're offering, it's still there. And since the clients are are locked in with us on a yearly or um, two to three years contract, we're still pretty busy. Okay. So in terms of work, it's still heavy, which is heavier now because on top of that, we're doing distance learning and then we're doing everything else. Um, that a mom should do. So, yeah, it gets crazy because of that. Cam's <laughs> oh, always busy. <laughs> you know, it's good that everyone can get in touch yeah. with one another now yes. because Anywhere of yeah, because of Zoom, Viber, and, and all this. Something I'm, I'm not really very much uh, aware of, you know, <laughs> young as I am. Young but then I, I wonder That's how... I wonder how it is with you. Like, dive. like how are you looking at the oh. the so-called digital dive? dive? Yeah, yes. yeah. So, what's your definition of the new, new normal. normal along these lines? Have, have you, I'll go have, for it. Have, have, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, part of the new normal that I'm very happy with is not driving through traffic. Uh, okay. Uh, especially. Yeah not live in in the valley no? so we moved here last year um during the thick of construction of um south luzon expressway so sometimes it would take me mga three to five hours just to do a meeting in the city and if there are events i need to book i need to stay overnight or at least two nights in a hotel just to make sure that i'm on ground when the events is happening so even if we moved here i'm still book in a hotel like every weekend because of the events so that and that's a big chunk of the expenses also no um that we did not put or or included when we quoted the plan so when the pandemic happened i'm happy that i can do uh, metro manila clients on zoom because Filipinos usually wanted to meet per- face to face, person to person. No? They wanted to discuss, like, they really want to see you <laughs> and touch you. Yeah. Right? Um, and like our international clients, we're so used to telecons. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a good normal for us. And I'm happy that we've caught up um, locally in terms of telecons. Because some of you don't get to the face to face. It's more of pumustahan and, you know, chica. Uh-huh. <laughs> so. I'm happy that I don't have to go through the traffic. But of course, on the other side, I miss seeing everyone and I miss talking to people. Oh, um, face to face. I think I'm starting to lose my adult voice because I'm just talking to kids all the time. So my voice is getting higher and higher and higher. Because <laughs> 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 what about you, uh, Jenny or Celine? For me, it's a, definitely a changed world. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the positive of it where I think that we were all forced to be more efficient with our time. Mm-hmm. We're forced to communicate in different ways because like what Emma was saying, mm-hmm. in the past, we were always just used to meeting, 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 and the traffic was not helping in okay. terms of our efficiency because sometimes I remember in the past, we'd have a meeting in QC, then a meeting in Alabang, mm-hmm. and before you know it, you're five hours on the road. And now, because people are forced to use Zoom, use uh, WhatsApp, and all these other uh, tools, Mm -hmm. we are actually more efficient. Mm -hmm. And we're learning Mm -hmm. to trust our teams better. Because maybe in the past, we wanted them to physically be in the office because we felt that they were more responsible and more, um, I guess, dedicated when they're there. But now, things are getting done Mm -hmm. in spite of people being at home and working from home. So I think it's that's actually one the same thing for me. Um, I mean, like, I think in terms of um, 
in terms of the whole digital thing, I've benefited the most because I'm actually here in Canada and, and I'm working. You know, I get to work with my team and not just my PR team. I work with my Honest Junk team, my Kiel Naturals team. And, you know, like b- before the pandemic, I never thought that that would have been possible. You know, usually when I'm out of the country, I... I'm on vacation. I'm not really working. Mm-hmm. But now, I, you know, with, with Zoom and Telegram and all of those things, I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, it's like, it's like a world of possibility, you know. So it's like, it's like all of a sudden, so many things are possible. Like what Jenny said, we're so efficient now. Um, and Even aside from that, like it's also pushed us to be, yeah. And, and it's also pushed us to be like, I guess, more creative, yeah. you know, um, now, like we you know we have these online events mm-hmm. and we're, we're just doing things a different way. And I, I'd like to think that those are exciting new ways of doing things. Mm-hmm. I think it's also fun for the people who, um, who we do our projects with. Um, it's just like, you know, it's it's different, but I think it's also like good. Yeah. Um, taking off from that, uh, you've had to adjust a lot because of the well, the quarantines and then the lack of transportation, and other than the the good effects of that, which was no traffic and being borderless in your communications. Um, let's go back to the time when the pandemic was just beginning. The, what kind of yeah? How did you react? I mean. A lot yes. of businesses were so affected and um, in operations and communications, I guess. So how about for you in PR? Yeah. And you also have companies that you also run as businesses. So tell us I about that experience. I think Jenny can answer this best. Yeah. Yeah, I can answer this. Um, definitely a lot of anxiety and uncertainty in the beginning. So aside from PR, I'm also in F&B. Mm-hmm. So f and is one of the most directly hit globally when it comes to the pandemic. Mm-hmm. But it was really, I looked at it as a time to just use, to really focus on your business and trimming the fat. Yeah. Because I think in the past pre-pandemic, we were just always thinking, oh, I need to expand. Mm-hmm. I need to add more people. Mm-hmm. I need to get someone for social media, someone for PR, someone for this, someone for that. But mm-hmm. Obviously, when the pandemic hit, we were forced to really look into ourselves Mm -hmm. first and then our businesses Mm -hmm. to really review what's important, what's most important, and how do I keep moving forward? Because at the end of the day, we're entrepreneurs, and we want to make sure that we keep on going despite of the challenges. Mm -hmm. It was that. It was trimming the fat. It was was believing Mm -hmm. that it was going to get better. And... Mm -hmm. Fortunately, so at the start, of course, it was it was depressing even. Yes. We were anxious. We were unsure. But true enough, several months later, we started seeing progress no matter how small. And that's what keeps us going. Okay, good. Positive um, attitude. Just to, add, just to add to that as well, like I think, you know, like so yes, like in the beginning we were – really anxious because of course PR is greatly affected right like there there is no such thing if you think about it there's no su- such thing as social distancing with public relations it's really about you know seeing people relationships and all of that so we were really forced to do like a I guess like a pivot in the way we think about public relations yes. um, and I think what's also interesting about that is that we were able to you know like at first we were scared and anxious and then all of a sudden, it was like just things clicked. Mm. Um, and, you know, we were able to figure out a way how to still serve our clients, how to still execute events, mm. although in a different way. Yeah. Um, we, you know, st- still be able to give our clients the media mileage that they need despite, you know, despite a raging pandemic ongoing. Um, so... I mean, like for me personally, and I'm sure Jenny feels the same way. Like I, I also want to, you know, I also want to say parang kudos to the team also because, mm-hmm. you know, like it could have been very easy to just be like, oh my gosh, you know, this is too hard or like, voila, you know, the, the industry is affected and mm-hmm. it is what it is. But 
instead of feeling that way, the team really, you know, pushed, like we, we really pushed ourselves to, and came up with ways to overcome these challenges. And I'm like, I'm really proud to say that, you know, well, just like, um, you know, business has actually been busier for us. Um, we, you know, I, I'm not even sure if we, we can say this, but we, you know, we have certain quotas and we actually hit our quota. We hit over our quota. Wow. And that is really something that I am so proud of because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a pandemic year, right? So like, if we didn't hit that, it would have been, um, what's the word? Disappointing, but kind of understandable. But the fact that the team persevered and really, and really, you know, um, they did it. Yeah. You know, I'm really, really, I'm really so proud, okay. proud of the team. Parang you, you encounter the problem and you just run with it, diba? Parang go. Yeah, you know, so it's really, a, it's also the mindset, I think, you know, like, like I said, that you can, you could have, like, the, we could have, like, been negative about it and just been like, well, you know, it's a pandemic, um, business is affected, but, you know, it's nice to know that everybody in the team took it upon themselves to, like, really sit down and think, how can we still um, achieve our goals? Yeah. You know, how can we still succeed? You know, and it's just, it's just nice that, you know, like we didn't let a pandemic get in the way of our dreams and our, our goals for ourselves. That's good. Oh, how about you, Em? Uh, was it the same for you also? Um, you had to adjust or um, you encountered you know, anxiety? <laughs> First. <laughs> you know, I would say uh, this pandemic is actually a blessing in disguise for us. Uh, last year, around December, I was telling my husband, babe, I think I'm gonna die soon because I was so tired from doing, you know, the runaround. Like what Jenny said, no? Oh, I feel you keep you. on doing <laughs> And then you drop from one place to the next place. And the traffic is horrible, and then you have all of these responsibilities. So I was sleeping for like four to six hours per night, and I felt that my sleep debt has been like years of accumulation already, and I'm starting to feel it. And my health has been, I can feel it in my health. Like I know that if I catch this virus, mm. I won't survive it. So that's my number one anxiety. It's more of health concern. Mm. Um, on the brighter side, I'm so happy that everyone in the team stepped up. Mm -hmm. They saw a lot of these, a lot of their friends and their relatives getting laid off from their jobs, and they see a lot of businesses closing left and right. Mm. So it kind of gave them like, the motivation to perform better. Um, a lot of them, I think the anxiety with them is more of, can we survive the pandemic? But it's more of health-wise also. Because with Game Changer, they know that the clients are locked in with us. So in terms of, you know, um, financial security, at least they have that until the contracts expire. And even if there's a contract that would expire, it's not like all at the same time would expire so they would have enough time to, to adjust but I see a lot of you know improvements in terms of behavior in terms of attitude mm -hmm. um, in terms of performance quality of work during the pandemic that I've always been wishing the past few years like I always telling our HR hey, what can we do how can we improve um, productivity how can we inspire them more to work how, how can they be excited going to work but this pandemic, everyone is so mindful of their output. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a good blessing for us. It's a good change. Um, and then the yeah, so we're more mindful of our health and uh, how we spend our time. Mm -hmm. And we're getting more sleep. We're getting more rest. So that one, I'm very happy. Uh, and and another thing that I'm so happy, I have this um, passion projects that. I'm trying to I've been trying to launch for like years and I never had time to do that but this year I think Selena has been seeing me post about it the, the, yeah. I'm ordering from you <laughs> so finally this year um, the previous years I was just doing 
doing a lot of classes, boot camps, you know, for I'm telling my, my friends, okay, this is my retirement job. Like, if I don't want to do anything else and I just want to retire and not think of something else, this is what I'm going to do. So, over the years, I'm just building on skills. Uh, I was trying to launch it a few years back, but, you know, life happened and then the business and game changer took off. Uh, this year, because all the events have been canceled for, for this year, you had time. Um, I had time to finally do it. So it's really been a blessing in this place. I know I don't want to be insensitive, no, because I know a lot of people, a lot of families are suffering. But I think in terms of um how do how do you say it? Um personal realizations, prioritization, this is the best year. For me, yeah, I have so, to agree with you there. Um, yeah, a lot same. of what you call clutter in life when came away. Mm. It went away this yeah. year. But the things that you don't really need, um, you just went away on its own, and you're forced to really focus on what's important. Mm. Yeah. So, so for me, that's this is a good year for us, even though there's a pandemic. The silver lining. They say a 2020 vision in 2020, right? Yeah. yeah. So, it's like. What what is essential has become more clear for for us. I agree. It's obvious that they they got a lot of plus points from from the lockdown, no? But I wonder how it is from the from the point of view of of the clients. Uh, yeah. So, but before you answer that, how it has been with your clients? Let's pause for a a break. Uh, we'll be yeah. right back. Magsha-shopping na lang ako! Hello, can I get the following? One pink chair, bed sheets, na pink yung sofa, tapos slide, size 8, pajamas na blue. Oh, don't forget my... Wait lang, okay ba yan? Anything at the SM store, ma'am. Call to deliver. Ay, call. Kuya, pwede ba ako magpa-deliver sa ate ko sa Tagig, tapos sa friend ko sa Davao, tsaka sa... Ha! Cancel ko sa Lipa. Okay ba yan? Kahit saan po, pwede kami mag-deliver. Call to deliver. Good morning, sir. How may I help you? Bakit kailangan ko pang pumunta sa bangko? Kung nga naman, sir, ba't kailangan pang pumunta sa bangko? Why not get a Yubi app? So you can do all these without going to the bank. Bank the way you live. Union Bank. And we're back. Yeah. So tell us, how has it been with your... With your clients, have you been talking to them? So, who'd like to share with us their thoughts on 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 your clientele? Have they been well, I, I adjusting <laughs> to the situation? <laughs> we've been fortunate that, like M, we've had clients who have been with us for many many years, mm -hmm. and since their nature, the nature of their business is really more like um, consumer. Uh, market. Then they also had to keep on uh, create, keep on having campaigns, but we had to, of course, pivot before we would have a lot of events. But now a lot of our events are tied to partnerships with, say, Lazada or other online uh, e-commerce sites, and we had to just find other ways to promote and to get the message across. Because PR is communications and. Yeah. It doesn't just stop at not having events. We can keep uh, doing PR in, just in different channels. Oh, yeah. So yeah, in terms of our clients, we've been fortunate that they are still profitable in their own businesses, so they are still able to move forward with their PR campaigns. Of course, not as grand as how it used to be, but still continuous. It's a good thing. Huh? Yeah. What what businesses would did did have to 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 be on a standstill like like I guess like, the food no food and essentials 
F and B. F and B. Like a lot of the uh, big, big brands had to close oh, a lot of their stores, for instance. Um, also, travel, hotels. Oh, oh yeah. So, did that uh, diminish the volume of, of the business? I mean, I'm not just referring to your your company, but to the whole PR industry. Mm. Yes, definitely, definitely. Because mm. especially also like like fashion is another industry that's affected. Oh no! Because oh. of course, people will spend oh. on food, but not necessarily on clothes. Because like we're not going out, and, and <laughs> oh. you know, like that's extra. It's not a yeah. it's not a basic necessity. Yeah. So. So yeah, the fashion industry, not a lot are doing as many events. Like in the past, there were always holiday events that fashion we would have to manage or even summer yeah. events. But now, fashion's a bit quiet, I must say. Yeah. yeah. They've been just giving back to the community, diba? Right? Yeah. <laughs> they're doing CSR, working with yeah. brands. Yeah, in that connection, since they're engaged in... in in uh, corporate social responsibility have they also been asking for your help in that direction their CSR have you been helping them have they been asking your help yeah, yes we have clients that have their own campaigns although usually they plan their campaigns internally and then we help them promote we reach out to influencers for instance who can help post about the initiatives mm. but yes that's what's great like i think again another positive from this situation a lot of brands become more socially aware and conscious and they really really want to help and even in like um other industries in fnb you really see a lot of companies mm. helping out our front lines, for instance donating food um just trying to do their best to make sure that we're able to help out okay. oh yeah. yeah so um, ako, i'm interested to know more about because uh, we were talking about your PR pivot, diba? you've been more creative and you know, had to think of other ways to still fulfill your your job as PR for your clients. Uh, what about in your personal businesses? Because I'm I'm pretty sure uh, the pandemic also affected your your businesses. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how you adjusted, how you how it got affected by the pandemic? Because like Jenny, I think, are you still handling restaurants? And then um, Celine, I think, has a business. Um, I have Honest Junk yeah. and um, um, Kale Naturals. Yeah. So, um, would you like to tell us about those things? Did you go uh, um, me first or Jenny first? <laughs> <laughs> or M first. M also has her own. <laughs> M first. M first. Okay. M is nominated. <laughs> okay. Um, on the business side, um, all the <laughs> on the business side, all the brands that are directly under me, um, actually took off during this year. Uh, but the brand brands that are under my husband because they are related to fitness and nutrition. Um, especially the fitness side, no. Uh really took a hit. Um, we just opened our school in the South last March. And then two weeks after opening the, the school, uh, it's locked down. So all the investments prior to that, like um, the leasehold improvement, you know, you have to build, you have to build the gym, all the um, equipment, the furniture, so mm. everything. It's still, it's still there because um, contact sports and, and the, you no know, close sports are not yet allowed mm. as of this time, and especially doing a lot of martial arts and jujitsu. Oh. So, um, the gym is still closed. But on the other side, um, Game Changer took off very well. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's more clamor this year for digital um, activations and. Since a lot of businesses, especially the more traditional ones who doesn't know social media yet, were you know putting up their own website or selling online, um, a lot of the traditional businesses are clamoring to try to catch up this year. So there's there's a lot of opportunities out there. Um, we're saying no to 
I think more knows this year to a lot of brands uh, simply because their their trust and their core is also not aligned with with our trust and game changer. Um, and my other business, the retail side, really good. It took off very well also. So I just started it. I think last September October. Over, and we haven't even done any launch yet and my stocks for december it's almost all gone 90 percent gone so we haven't done any promotions yet but it's, our stocks move very well so on the business side our business it's it's doing very well except for the fitness side okay um, on the business side of the clients a lot of them took it especially the food industry and the travel industry um, the hotels that we're managing in in palawan el nido uh, all of them telegram um, the mall clients a lot of them are closing left and right so so on my side i'm happy that their business is taking off but i cannot be like 100 percent happy also because i'm seeing a lot of friends and a lot of clients so we have a lot of clients with their food so they don't have the um, delivery system yet we had to help them be what to deliver because there's no food traffic in the food court so, so there it's mixed feelings because you know you're, you're, I would say you're blessed on one side, but you see a lot of suffering on the other side. So you have to find, um, you have to find, find, do you get happy? Do you get sad? So, yeah. but I suppose the bad things, it's mixed feelings. Something good. Something good. Yeah. I, I'd like to think that the, all the negative things we're seeing now will lead to something good. Um, new, new things that we have to tackle again in the future, diba. Right? Yeah. To lead to change, yeah. diba Jojo? Yeah. Oh, so. <laughs> and um, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So everyone is. Oh, how about you, um, Jenny and Celine? Tell us a little bit about your um, the, the, your our business. Yeah. Um, well, for for me, for Honest Junk. Um, so Honest Junk is my company. We make um healthy snacks. So we make, for example, like gummy bears that are made using natural ingredients. We don't use any refined sugar. They're fortified with malungay. Um, I think with Honest Junk, we're lucky in the sense that, you know, before the pandemic, we had already made moves to improve like our website, um, our customer experience so like that was already something that we were already doing so when the pandemic hit so to speak we were kind of ready oh. in that in that sense mm -hmm. you know um plus we're a healthy food business and i think people have become a lot more um a lot more aware of what they're putting in their bodies like health is definitely good health is definitely something that people really aspire for yes. especially now um so that in, in in that way honest junk has been has been good um for kale naturals which is my anti-mosquito uh business with my partner tina lagdameo um that business has you know has been around for a long time already it's it was also consistent. I think like the only thing that affected us in the beginning was the initial lockdown, wherein we couldn't deliver our products. Um, that was it. Uh, but in terms of demand, we it was still it was still quite strong. Um, especially I think because like with KL Naturals, a lot of the business is actually. Um, a lot of you know we have a lot of free sellers for kale natural so it's kind of like a you know it's additional income for a lot of households oh, yes. um and because a lot of people lost their jobs um a lot of people needed to make extra money i think they were looking um they were looking at kale naturals particularly to to um augment. add on to their yeah. household income yeah. yeah to augment celine did you say rina like the mayor Rina. Tina, ah, Tina, Tina like the mayo, uh, but okay. yeah, but related to Rina. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so you both, you know both. Of you know Tina and Rina. I know Rina F, like the mayo. I know Tina more. Like Tina's my partner, but I've met Rina. Yeah, yeah I think. Okay. 
Rina is either the cousin or the sister of Tina's husband. Sige lang. Uh, okay, Carrie. Okay. Ah, Carrie, yeah, of course. <laughs> the, the brother of Rina. You know Carrie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. So, T- Carrie's wife is my partner Ayun. for Honest Junk and for Kiel Naturals. Wala nang donuts? No, no, no. She okay. nag shift si Tina sa healthy. <laughs> From donuts to healthy yeah, snacks. But you know, we should be sure. <laughs> also Tina. Oh, yeah. sige, sige. We'll invite mm-hmm. both of them again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jenny. Jenny has, um, also has restaurants, I think. Well, so I am in F&B, but uh, funnily enough, my, my F&B company is just a year old. I formed the new one. And when we started last year, our first outlet is a wine shop mm-hmm. that's located in Rockwell. Mm-hmm. And we, we really saw that the initial three months, the sales were really, really good. And then when the pandemic hit, that's when everything really just stopped. Like we had to close. We had to pivot also because uh, you know how here in the Philippines, we're so used to brick and mortar. Everyone likes to still go to the store and look at what's available and shop. Mm-hmm. And at the time, since we were so used to like brick and mortar, we never really thought of investing in, say, a website. So the first three months was really, really depressing because from seeing super high sales, we had to figure out what are we going to do with our staff? So many big um, F&B companies are closing down businesses. And here we are, um, you know, struggling. But my business partner and I felt, you know, we might as well keep pushing because this situation is not going to be forever. Um, Let's take care of our team. Let's see how we can improve our services, How what else we can offer. Use this time to really plan what we want for the business. Mm-hmm. And... Starting August, we started seeing more and more progress, very, very small progress. But for us, what inspired us to keep pushing was that we felt uh, so much creativity was lost because of the pandemic. So many restaurants closed because they couldn't afford to keep their overhead. Mm. But while we can, even if we were not profitable during those months, we felt that we needed to keep pushing forward. Right. So now we're seeing better results. We actually are looking at being profitable by this month. Mm, nice. So that's a good thing. And we're hoping that by 2021, we can expand a little and just uh, have a better uh, product mix so that we can make sure that we're able to keep going and keep increasing our sales. Okay. Wow. They're very admirable. Oh, no, they're just very, you know, positive and upbeat about it. Thank you. <laughs> would, I, would I have done it that way, too? I'm sure, John. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, I wonder if they have uh, role models, no? But before you answer that, let's have a... Another short break. <laughs> Magandang araw mga kafanalo, I'm Akira. At ako naman po si Kilay for another episode ng Hashtag Fanalo. At dahil magpapasko na, hindi na namin kayo pahihirapan pa. Sagutin lamang ating question of the day na... Sa anong kanta mo maiyahalin tulad ang 13th month pay mo at bakit? Yun. Funny, funnier, and funniest commenters pa rin ang ating pipiliin. Funny and funnier commenters will get gift packs from Sharp Philippines and Glow Pink Blush. And funniest commenter natin will get the same plus Sharp, Sharp Microwave, microwave oven. oven! Kaya comment, comment lang! At tomorrow, ia-announce po natin ang ating mga lucky commenters. Just tune into the Facebook page of The Daily Tribune and hashtag panalo. So, again, good luck and Merry Christmas! Christmas! And we're back. Jojo, that was a word from our sponsors. And um, 
in relation to that. Okay. Uh, stay tuned. I'd like to invite uh, our viewers to stay tuned on our Facebook page, Daily Tribune Facebook page, to win exciting prizes, including a brand new sharp microwave oven from hashtag Fun Panalo. Wow, wow. Okay. So I need back. one for, for my room. <laughs> I need one for this office. Okay. So uh, you were asking uh, our guests yeah. about their role, yeah, role models. Because they can be role models themselves. Though. Yeah, yeah. But I they probably so. got their styles from someone else they look up to. Okay, so let's uh let's have them back. Okay. Welcome. And uh would you like to share with us the your role models, if any, or who Your inspires heroes. you to be who you are as entrepreneurs, moms, and, yeah. you know, just very... Yeah. Mixing these various roles yes. and be successful at them. Yes, so who will go first this time, Naman? <laughs> I think um, M again. <laughs> sorry, it's a little choppy. <laughs> yeah, it's choppy. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I asking you about our uh, your role models or who you look yeah. up to or who inspires you to be who you are as, yes. you know, very successful ladies in business. And at home. And at home, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mixing the two so well. So, uh, Celine, maybe. Who's your role okay. model? Who's your role model now, Anne? Who inspired you to be uh, such a, an achiever? Role <laughs> yeah. models for me have a lot. Um, uh, because my previous job before um before doing Game Changer, uh, I was an expat for over ten years. Exactly, 13 years. So under my umbrella, 13 different countries. I was handling 13 different countries. And to, to the owners, most of the time, the Africa's owners were representative. Uh, I would say the role models are that I have early on are the different bosses that I have in each country. So it's it's very eclectic. But one thing that the children love is you know their respect for everyone. Like um, multinational companies, whether you're a Filipino or you're a German, you know whether you're from first world or a third world country, we treat you the same. So that's the first world um, model, and and with that, the business model that they created also um, they want to make sure that it's very inclusive of everyone, very respectful of everyone. Going to do uh, on policy. Um, so that's when we built Game Changer. Mm -hmm. That's kind of one of the major um, core values that I want the team to have and and what we want to emulate. So you know, very inclusive of everyone. So when you say inclusivity, um, even in, in terms of education, it's not very particular whether you're high school graduate or your college graduate or you have MBAs. Um, at the end of the day, it's about the attitude and the output, you know, the quality of it. Um, in terms of political classes, whether you're poor or you're from a rich family, as long as you're willing to do the job, um, and as long as you do it the right way and the honest way, then you can, you can, you know, um, go to game changer. Then whether you're, you're, um, nationality is, you know, whether you're a Pakistani or an Indian or you're Chinese or you know, it doesn't matter to us. We look beyond colors, uh, we look beyond religion, we look beyond political point. So in terms of role models, I would say we um, when we came back here in the Philippines. Uh, we partnered with a couple when we started the first business. And the first thing that they they um, they're always hammering to us is in the Philippines you take care of your reputation because it's uh, easier to build a good reputation. Um, then I think you know. We have to Cut you a little bit. Sorry? There's a problem with audio. I think uh, one of connectivity. No, no, the audio. I th one of your mics maybe. Can you check if your mic is open? 
So, yeah, it's open. Okay. Um, we'll, I can, okay, we'll, I can hear. We'll take another break and then we'll come back and then we'll ask the same question. So we can just... Bilang bagong mag-asawa, sabay kami natututo sa buhay. Sabay rin namin inaaral ng mga bayarin sa bahay. Kahit kami, nagtaka sa biglang laki ng electricity bill namin. Huwag pong mangambang maputulat. Sinisigurado ng Meralco na walang disconnection hanggang September. Estimated bills lang ang natanggap natin ng March, April, at para sa ilan, May. Dahil sa lockdown, isang tabi to para hindi na maguluhan. Ang May o June ay actual meter reading na. Kung May, nagka-actual reading, ibabawas dito ang huling reading bago mag-ECQ. Yan lang po ang ating babayaran hanggang tatlong buwang konsumo. Kung estimated reading sa May at June nagka-actual reading, ibabawas din dito ang huling reading bago mag-ECQ. Yan lang po ang ating babayaran. Hanggang apat na buwang konsumo, walang labis. Tandaan, kung ano lang na konsumo, yun lang ang babayaran. Ako po si Mateo G. At ako naman po si Sarge. G? G! So, do you have your role models? Because what you're doing is not easy. So there must be someone you look up to. Or must have taught you something. Because yeah, yeah. Mentored you into yeah. Somewhere in their so youth. <laughs> or childhood. So we go back to... Yeah. Who are guess. your heroes in, in, in your fields? Who do we ask first yeah. again? It's M again. Okay. okay. So yeah. who do you look up to? Um, yeah. Where was I? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Our role model in the Philippines uh, is one of our partners when we when we came back home. No, because I was an expat for thirteen years. Oh. So when I came back home, year two thousand and eight. My fiancé, my then fiancé, now husband, my, my fiancé and I partnered with a Filipino couple also. Um, and one of the things that they're always telling us, they're, they're um, kind of, what do you call it, senior, ready, but they're, we consider them like um, captains of their industry. Oh. So we're the young couple that they're trying to mentor. Um, uh in, in their business. And one of the things that um, they're always telling us is you take care of your reputation in the Philippines. It's better to build a good reputation yeah. than, you know, than um, oh. lose it and then rebuild it back. Mm -hmm. It's it's always easier to build based on good foundation than rebuild it on a shaky foundation. Oh. So ever since we started businesses in the Philippines, it's always kind of core. Um, and then they're always telling us also na, like BIR stuff, they would say, don't care if other people are not following it, but care for what you have. I mean, um, do things right, do things honestly. Oh. So doing things honestly, even if no one is looking, mm. uh, that's one of the things that, that we love from them. Because then you know that no matter if you're not there mm. or you're there, they would always do the right things for you being your your partners so that's one of the you know that's that's um i think that we loved and then my our, my other role model would be um my previous bosses from my previous company before i came back home in the philippines i was an expat for over 13 years mm -hmm. and and our big bosses were you know they're very inclusive of um people so whether you're uh from a third world country or a first world country, they always give you the same um, um, uh, treatment springboard. Meaning, you all uh, start from the same level. They treat you um, the same. So, no matter your viewpoint, also um, your political point of view, your cultural point of view, they always you know treat you equally. So, inclusivity is one of the things that. Um, that that we always um, admire, and that's one thing of one of the cores that 
core values and core traits that we're always trying to have in our company. Nice. I kind of lost there. <laughs> I was talked to Celine's wine. <laughs> I think that's it for me. Who's having wine? We should have wine, Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, my turn. <laughs> yeah, my brain went to, <laughs> to the wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I can answer next, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Is it Mina? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So who's your role model? Yes. The, yeah. or okay, so yeah. for me, um, well, in um on the PR front, I guess. I would have to say that it would be um, my former boss, mm. Laika Carpo. Dina, I think I actually when I was working in L'Oreal yes. um, under Laika, who was the head of PR at that time, that's when I first met you, I yes. think. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, I, I really, like, when I started with that company, I really, that was a time, like, I really had no clue about public relations. I was really just... You know, I just kind of, you know, <laughs> it was, it felt like a baptism of fire. Um, and I was just really lucky to have a boss like Laika who taught me everything, taught me everything that I, I know today. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the most valuable lessons she told me at the time was that, you know, when it comes to public relations, you always have to, you just always have to have integrity mm -hmm. you always have to uphold your values mm -hmm. um and you have to come from a place of authenticity because the public will always know mm -hmm. if you're making bola if you're lying you know what i mean yes. so um she said it's always important to be genuine mm -hmm. you know um and i think that when jenny and i um, built our agency um, we kind of like you know we, we, we have the same value set so that's actually why Jenny and I our partnership has always worked because although we have varied interests although we're very different in our personalities what really keeps us um, together is that we uphold the same values mm -hmm. um, and that's been that's that's kind of been our glue, you know, and we've been business partners for Jen. I, I can't even remember how many years has it been that we've been so <laughs> partners, but it's been more than a decade, right? Oh, oh, there, it's a decade. Um, so, yeah, just just as long as my marriage. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so so I, I, I really admire Laika because she really embodied that in an industry where it's so easy mm to kind of lose your lose your the, the path you know mm -hmm. um she really stuck to it um and she became very very successful and she really taught me that you don't need to cut corners in order to be successful and it's true and it's actually um it's actually something even very true during the hardest year of our careers you know as public relation public relations professionals, this has been the most difficult here. And I would like to say that I do believe that it's it's because we have that integrity. It's because we have those values. It's because we have that genuine care for our clients that we still succeeded. You know, we overcame those challenges and we succeeded. So I really would like to give her credit for that. So like a carpool. Now for mm. my own small businesses, Honest Junk and Kiel Naturals. Mm -hmm. um, I think my role model would probably be my mom mm -hmm. because my mom was, you know, I guess like me, like she was a working mom. Mm -hmm. You know, she um, um, she along with a business that uh, put us through school. It, you know, uh, it, it gave us opportunities for travel and, you know, all those, all those things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's because of my mom that I grew up this way as well, knowing that I, I, I can do anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I, if I put my mind to something, I can do it because I saw my mom achieve the same thing. I like that. 
there. Like my mom too. Okay, yeah. Jenny. Jenny? <laughs> Nami kong sinabi, sorry. Well, okay, like, I, I was asking myself the question about role models, and I I I, I fell into business mm. because I needed to survive. So it's not like I thought about, like, looking at Steve Jobs or all these big entrepreneurs and like, oh, they're my role model. Mm. No, it was more like I needed to survive, so I needed to just do something in order for me to survive. Mm. And I guess to answer the question, I don't really have a single role model, but what I have are a lot of people that inspire me. Mm. So for me, what keeps me going as an entrepreneur is having a good set of peers in the different industries that I'm in that I can easily go to Mm. and talk to and brainstorm with and just really share what I know and learn from them. And I'm also blessed to have really, really good partners mm-hmm. in in my businesses that I'm able to really, you know, just keep challenging myself and keep pushing forward. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, um, I think I think I have my tribe, yeah, and and they inspire me. So, so for me, I find that each of them, each each partner, even each team member, mm-hmm. they inspire me in some way, and they are my role models. So yeah. Yes. Ang ganda ng mga sagot nila no, Yeah, yeah. Very so, inspiring. <laughs> but um it turns out you what? you don't really need one, no? You just have to be good at what you're doing. Yes. I think that's what I learned this afternoon also. from talking with uh, our guests. No? But moms also also are good examples. Yes, moms. Your parents, yeah. And they are moms themselves, diba? So um yeah, me. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny's a mom too. Everybody in our team calls her mom because she takes care of everyone. Everybody, <laughs> we're all a mom in some way. No, I don't have kids, but I naman. consider myself a mom. <laughs> Pati naman ako. Oh, ikaw <laughs> Mami ko siya. <laughs> Yeah. Um. So, parang we're we're coming to uh, the end of the show. I'm sorry, yeah. but we have run out of time. But uh, so we'd like to ask you to share your insights or your learnings from the pandemic as yeah. business women, as um females, young females, yeah. na who have achieved so much over the past few years and are facing this new. New dawn, or diba, almost because the, of what the yeah. pandemic did to everything. Yeah, yeah. So please um, share with us your thoughts and um, before it's we say goodbye, it's a new world. No? It's a new yeah. world, talaga. So, mga women soldiers talaga magso survive. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so maybe we'll start again with uh, with M. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> for me, no. Parang, um. Okay. So. I always ask myself this question, um, and 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 it's from one of my mentors, no, from one of my previous mentors at work. He's always asking, um, "Where do you want to be in the future?" And this is like um, my guiding light all throughout the years. I always say, um, "Where do you want to be in the future?" And then um, look at where are you now, where you are now. So connecting from where you are now to where you want to be in the future, you think of how to get there. So if right now we're on this pandemic and you think you need to do something, what do you need to do? What does it take to get you there, to get you to where you want to be in the future? So um, in all of the projects that we're doing, me whether it's personal project or personal decision making, um, like launching my really good PH right now, um, it's always been going back um, to this. A few years back, I asked myself, where do I want to be when I grow old? What do I want to do? Um, what's like, how, how do I look at my retirement? So I saw myself, or I wanted myself to be just relaxing, traveling, making things with my hand, no pressure. So even as early as, you know, when I in my expat years, 
Like I'm so old na next five years. <laughs> um, I make, you know, classes here and there, boot camp. Um, I'm, I'm doing, if I'm in Vietnam, I do soap making or if I'm in Morocco, I get, I always enroll at something. So whether I'm traveling on, you know, on, whether it's a vacation mm-hmm. or it's a business travel, I always see to it that I get something, I learn something. I do like speed learning. Like even if it's, a one-day course, a two-day course, a one-week course. I always make sure that wherever we go, I always enroll at something. And that something is always aligned to what I want to do um, moving forward. So it's more of future planning. So I would say that a lot of things that, that um, a lot of the good things that came into fruition this year during the pandemic mm-hmm. was backed up by, you know, years and years of, planning from before pa and then it's it all connected one way or the other so like the previous years i'm, I'm always saying okay when, when am i gonna launch this when would i have the time to do this and then finally boom pandemic um the event side is wiped out okay i have time now i can do this mm. so it's always you know not really uh being over critical about your future or overthinking about your future but every day mm-hmm. you do something little by little little by little to get you there so so there yeah <laughs> very well said <laughs> uh, who goes next celine or jenny yes okay i'm um, so ah okay jenny go <laughs> okay <laughs> well i think for me I always remind myself of two things. Mm-hmm. First would be you really, really have to know yourself well mm-hmm. because you have to ask yourself, by knowing yourself, you can pretty much know what you also want to achieve, what you want to accomplish, mm-hmm. and you will stay true to you and you will stay true to your values. And that's what's going to make you want to work hard mm-hmm. for what you want. And and when and the second thing for me which Anne kind of also mentioned i had to teach myself to keep present because i think we tend to remember the past and our mistakes or get anxiety because of what you know because of the uncertainty of what the future holds and kind of that was pushed to us when this pandemic hit but i really had to train myself look at the present what can you do better today what can you do better to push forward and to make sure that your, your team is taken care of, mm-hmm. to make sure that you are still moving towards accomplishing your goals? Mm-hmm. And never mind if you want a little bit, but still, you know, progress, then that's a good thing. Yeah. So for me, have faith, stay present, and stay true. Oh, I like those top three. <laughs> Stay present. Stay true. It's so hard, the man, to go after Jenny and Anne after everything they said. <laughs> I agree with everyone. <laughs> okay, so for me, I guess my there's so many lessons really in 2020. Um, like like I always say, it's it's really it's it's 2020 vision in 2020. Um, there's been a lot of clarity um, on, you know, essential, for example, is a word that people threw around a lot this year. And um, and it's really true. Like for me, there was a lot of clarity on what essential really means to me. Um, and like what Jenny also said earlier, it's like trimming the fat of that, right? Like, so it kind of like, I had the time this year to like really think about the things that matter the most to me. What are my most... Um, what are the most important things? Um, what are my priorities? Um, and I guess because I was able to think about all of that, those those um, thoughts help ease my anxiety about um, what was happening and about the future. Because I I also realized that I was still lucky. You know, um, I had I have my family around me. I'm healthy. Um, we're we're safe Mm -hmm. we have a roof over our heads our businesses are still okay um and i guess because 
because of that, because I had a more positive mindset, I was able to calm down um, and be- and become a better leader also to our teams, right? Because I, I also think that your team will they look they look to you, eh, right? So if you're a headless chicken, if you're so anxious, they will also feel mm-hmm. that anxiety. They're they're also gonna feel scared. And I think it was very important and, um like for Jenny and, and also um the other managers in our team, mm-hmm. for example, to to really take charge and make the rest of the members of our agency feel secure. Mm-hmm. Um and that also is the same with um, my other businesses with Honest Junk and with Kel. Like, you know, we it was so important to like really show them that hey, it's okay, you know we got this. We're we're gonna be okay, mm-hmm. you know. Um and I guess it also you know, I, I also uh, realized, I suppose, the the value of each member in my team. Like, I mean, of course, I valued them before, but I think that that was even more um, cemented or it was made even more clear because really, like, especially for me, like being away in Canada, I was like, oh, my gosh, how are we going to do this? But because, because they really stepped up, everybody stepped up. You know, um, nobody was nobody was like victim mode. Like everybody was just like, okay, you know, we're in this situation. We have to work together. Um, we have to we have to um, just do whatever we can, you know, um, to make the situation better. And like I was just so overwhelmed that I was like, wow. Oh, we we really have amazing people with us, you know, because it's not like what the challenges that people had to overcome this year, they weren't easy, you know, um, and yet they did it. So like for me, I'm like, wow, like I'm just so, so proud of my team. And like that's something that, you know, um, one of my, I guess, realizations na parang wow I, they're, ang galing nyo <laughs> like if I already knew that you were galing before parang even more so now like wow so Proven, I guess tried and tested the most difficult year of all diba <laughs> galing naman yes so, really um, thank you very much for sharing um, your thoughts and your stories and we hope our viewers learned a lot from from listening to them I I did. I'm sh- I I got inspired again all over again because you know the pandemic. It's easy to to feel up and down. <laughs> so um, talking with this very um, inspiring ladies really yeah. boosted me again. So yeah. thank you very much for joining us in this show. Um, we were with Celine Gabriel Lim, Jenny Roswegi, and M Sulit. And this has been Dina Ventura. Jojo. And this has been Perfect. Thank you very much.